Hi everyone and welcome back. Last year I gave you the Barson Audio Solo E3 XGT review, which uh, shortly after became my go-to headphone amplifier for quite a few reasons. It was lightweight, it was small enough, it didn't occupy a lot of desktop space, especially in its uh, vertical position. Uh, it was very technical sounding, it was clean, very uh, transparent sounding, fast, nimble, impactful sounding. It was big sounding in terms of sound stage, but most importantly, it was able to drive all my headphones no problem, uh, which was actually quite a novelty back then. So this one is very impressive headphone amplifier. As I was departing for the Munich High End show this year, Barson Audio informed me that they are working on a brand new Soloist Free XGT, uh, which will go by the same price point of 2499, but its internal circuitry is actually updated. It now has some um, power modules, which I'll be talking uh, shortly. And they also revealed a single-ended only version of the Soloist called 3GT, which is actually more affordable, going for 2199. But I'm being told that this one actually sounds quite differently. So uh, clearly my um, enthusiasm level went from zero to I need to hear them as soon as possible. I have them for about a month. Uh, I'm comparing them for quite some time and I think that I'm ready to give you my final impressions about them. So let's check them out. First of all, both of these models sport exactly the same cases found on the old Soloist Free XGT. Uh, however, there is one small subtle tweak, and that is their rubber feet right now sitting at 8 mm tall compared to 2 mm on the old Soloist uh, Free XGT. So that should help a little bit with uh, heat dissipation when sitting in the horizontal position. The Soloist Free XGT is uh, slightly hotter compared to uh, current production class A solid state headphone amplifiers of today, uh, mostly because uh, these two are biased into constant 100% class A operation. Uh, the single ended only variant is slightly cooler because it uses four transistors as opposed to eight, and of course, uh, those will generate less heat. Apart from this, uh, these two units are basically looking like the old uh, Solois 3 XGT, uh, so this is actually a very good thing. Uh, since, of course, both units, as I was saying, uh, were biased into class A operation, uh, it was uh, very important to adopt active cooling because they were getting very, very hot. So you can see this an opening and a 120 millimeter knocked by fan. Uh, but don't worry, it uh, generates 25 dB of noise. And uh, personally, in my office, I have a lot more noise. My PC is noisier. So personally, I cannot hear uh, this one uh, spinning or working near me. That actually wasn't really a problem for me. Moving on to controls, the Solowiz 3 XGT offers you a 4-pin XLR output, a regular headphone jack, and a 3.5mm uh, microphone input. The single-ended version swapped that 4-pin XLR with another quarter-inch headphone output. Uh, they have monochrome OLED screens, they have uh, big volume wheels, which are made from aluminum, of course. They have this uh, gnarly texture and they offer 99 steps, so there is no more guessing how much power there is on top. Taking a glance on the back panels, twin pairs of XLR and RC inputs come into view, totaling four pairs of analog inputs on the free XGT and two pairs of RCA inputs on the free GT. Both units can function as high-performance preamplifiers, and I'm informed that Barson Audio has fine-tuned the preamp sections to better harmonize with a broader array of power amplifiers. Consequently, the Balanced 3 XGT offers a pair of XLR outputs, while the single-ended 3 GT offers a pair of RCA outputs. Additionally, both units proudly present a single RCA subwoofer output. Opening up their cases, Barson Audio is informing us that the stock voltage regulators of the old Soloist 3 XGT, which had a noise floor of 120 microvolts, uh, were swapped with much higher performance ones that have a noise floor of 40 microvolts. So clearly the noise floor went down by three times. Uh, these ones are getting a much cleaner power 
through the entirety of their circuitry, which is great. And of course, when noise goes down, it means that uh, music and you know detail retrieval, all that goes up. And uh, this one have a um, signal to noise ratio of 116 dB versus 110 dB on the old Solace 3 XGT. So clearly, uh, these are more transparent, more detailed sounding, much closer to the source material. Uh, that is actually interesting and their silent power modules can be uh, swapped. Uh, they are now uh, producing those uh, SP02 modules which will cost 300 US dollars per four pieces. I already have the first production batch and four of them already sitting in the new free XGT and I'll be comparing them with the SP01, the stock ones uh, sitting in this one and of course with the stock voltage regulators of the old Solways 3 XGT, that should be a quite an interesting comparison. Both units provide you absolutely the same power of 10 watts per channel, so pretty much the same power with the old one, but you really don't need more power than this, they already can drive pretty much anything, including uh, the lowest uh, sensitivity headphones. But there is a catch, the single-ended unit has four transistors instead of eight, and for this reason, Barson doubled the quiescent current of the single-ended version, which should have a big impact on the sound versus the balanced variant, but more on that later. If you want to know more about both units, then may I suggest my 17-page written review, which I left below, which on average contains about four times the information of this video. I tested them both in a headphone-based and speaker-based setup, so let's hit some eardrums. Sound-wise, first of all, Barson Audio made some small but very important adjustments, improvements, you might say. They lowered the noise floor, they increased the signal-to-noise ratio, the signal path is shorter, and I'm sure that uh, will have quite a beneficial effect on the sound performance. But there is something else that I want to discuss. From Q4 2021 to Q3 2023, the inflation rate went up by around 18% globally, and many audio manufacturers decided to increase their prices, uh, but luckily Barson Audio is not one of them. So you are getting better performance at lower prices considering the inflation rate, which is a very interesting fact to think about. However, many of you are probably asking yourselves how these two are sounding compared to the old Soloist 3 XGT. First of all, uh, these are no longer great sounding, these are already flagship material headphone amplifiers and there is a very thin line between great sounding and end game material headphone amplifiers and I do believe that these two are part of the later group. When I'm listening to my battle-hardened Soloist 3 XGT, it still puts a smile on my face, it's very fast, impactful and great sounding overall, but it doesn't have the same uh, refinement as these two are having. And I'm not about, you know, how technical it sounds, but actually in terms of tonality. Right off the bat, I felt that uh, the treble is more natural on these two, especially on the single-ended version. Uh, the bass and mid-range is also a little bit more texture compared to the old one. The old one was very linear, but, uh, you know, very true to the source, uh, but it was not a very meaty sounding headphone amplifier, which I can say about the newest units, so uh, these are putting slightly more meat on the bone compared to the old one. I feared that the newest units won't be as impactful or as fun sounding, but uh, all my fears are now forever gone because these two are very dynamic sounding, very punchy sounding, so pretty much the same as the old one. Uh, but this time around is not about the raw power number, so not about those having 10 watts of power. Uh, this time around is about having refined power because uh, I can feel more nuances playing on the micro scale, especially if you use a high performance DAC. I use a Rockna Wave Dream Signature and I immediately felt basically in one minute that I have some additional details playing on the micro level uh, on both units, but especially with those SP02 modules installed. There is simply more refinement, so not only about how much detail or transparency, but just how the music is playing. The treble is slightly more natural sounding, so it's not as glare itchy sounding as it was on the old 3XGT. There is slightly more texture around those bass notes, you feel that they are 
more waves of bass, something like that, which was not happening on the old Free XGT. So this is not only about detail retrieval, but also about uh, refinement, how natural, how easily the music is pouring. Uh, the old one was great, but these ones are just uh, better. So these are end game material headphone amplifiers, especially with those SP02 modules installed. The old Soloist Free XGT sometimes uh, with metal music, for example, with electronic music, it felt like a glass cannon headphone amplifier. It was very powerful, but it was uh, sometimes edgy sounding, so not very refined, uh, a little bit uh, treble intensive. Something that I cannot say about these two units. So uh, the treble is not rolled off, but uh, it doesn't have that excessive ringing in the treble. So they sound more natural uh, across the entire frequency response. Quiet passages are now harsher sounding, so when you are listening to classical music that have those big pauses, uh, you can feel that the background is darker this time around and that improved a few things. For example, the sound stage is not bigger per se, but you can feel that the note separation is slightly bigger. You have you know, more void spaces around those notes and you can have a better focus on individual notes. So the sound stage is not bigger, but uh, the imaging is definitely a little bit bigger, which is a welcome improvement. All right, but how does the old Solo is 3 XGT compare to the new one and how the single-ended version compare to the Solo is 3 XGT? As I have explained to you multiple times by now, not all watts are made equal. Some of them are slightly different. Uh, for example, one volt times one ampere equals to one watt, but so is uh, two volts times 0.5 amperes or two amperes uh, times 0.5 volts. So all of these are yielding one watt, but there will be quite a difference sound-wise uh, depending on the load. As I was telling you before, uh, this one has four transistors instead of eight, but uh, its quiescent current was doubled, so it provides uh, the same power with this one, but this power is slightly different. So I can say right now um, that this one right now is pretty much uh, the warmest, the most liquid, the most organic sounding uh, Barson made headphone amplifier. I actually owned all of their flagship headphone amplifiers from way back, uh, HA160, Conductor 1, Conductor 2, Conductor 3, and now the Soloist units. And this one reminds me very, very much about that old HA160 that was very meaty, very organic, very punchy, very natural sounding. But this one is, of course, a much more technical sounding. This one is fast clean, transparent at the same time, so it's nothing like that 160. Close in terms of tonality and how much, how music is pouring, but considerably more technical. Free XGT by comparison uh, is not as natural sounding, it's more, you know, more linear sounding in a way, but it doesn't remind me very much about the old Solace Free XGT. It sounds similar, but it's more refined. Uh, the treble, uh, there is a slightly more energy on the free XGT compared to the free GT, but not as much uh, treble energy like it happens on the old Soloist free XGT. So there is less ringing, less energy with the free X and considerably less with the single-ended variant. Uh, this one actually also uh, reminds me a little bit about the sound of Ilium Amp uh, 23R. Uh, so it has the same uh, liquidity, everything is just pouring naturally towards your ears. And uh, I remember that I couldn't use uh, plenty of Hifeman headphones with the old uh, Solace Free XGT because uh, the treble was a little bit hotter sounding and I couldn't use those uh, HE1000SE, Aria Stealth and many other headphones. But right now I can easily use all those Hifeman headphones with both units. I don't longer have that uh, itchy treble, that glare in the treble that is no longer happening. So uh, these are actually quite different. The free XGT is not more technical per se, uh, but it always makes you think about things like uh, transit response, how fast it sounds, how clean it sounds, how transparent it sounds, something that is not happening on the free GT. 
Uh, on this one, you are thinking just how beautiful your music is sounding. You're not thinking about all those small intricacies popping all around you. So if you want to analyze your music, I do believe that free XDT uh, is slightly better. If you want a more linear, more honest sounding amplifier, that, that is the free XDT. And if you want to just enjoy your music and um, with a glass of whiskey on your table, then I believe uh, the free GT is a better amplifier. The difference is not night and day, but it's immediate. And if you are using a high performance DAC, then you can hear that pretty much immediately. Now, I already have an organic and very lifelike sounding DAC, so I don't need more warmth. I don't need more texture. And for me personally, a free XGT works a little better with my setup. Uh, but if I'll be using some chip based uh, DACs, some FPGA DACs with Delta Sigma modulators, then I do believe a uh, free GT will be a much uh, better choice. Some of you are also wondering how the old Soloist free XGT is comparing with the new one. In a few words, it's more natural sounding. There are less treble glare, the noise went down, so of course you'll be hearing more music more details on the micro scale. And the difference is not actually very small. It's, uh, you can hear it in a few seconds with some flagship level headphones. It's like you are powering the new uh, free XGT with a high performance passive power conditioner and you somehow forgot uh, to power your old Solis free XGT with the same power conditioner. It feels like that. When the signal to noise ratio goes up, uh, the noise goes down, so clearly you'll be hearing more music on the micro scale. So this one is slightly more detailed compared to the old one. Uh, transparency improved and the sound stage improved as well, especially on the third on the Z axis. Some of you might uh, question my judgment uh, that lack uh, real world measurements and that's fine. Uh, but I assure you that the difference is immediate and it's uh, quite substantial, especially if you have a decent acoustic setup and a very good pair of trained ears. I'm fortunate enough to have uh, the first production batch of the SP02 modules, which will be dropping in about a month. Uh, they will be costing 300 US dollars for four modules. These two amplifiers have five modules inside, but since the fifth module is not staying in the signal path, uh, changing that one will not yield some sonic improvements. Traditional voltage regulators have a noise floor of around 200 microvolts. The one sitting in the old Solid Free X uh, GT 120 microvolts. The ones sitting in these ones, the SP0140 microvolts, and these ones will be providing you around 8 to 10 microvolts, which is just crazy to think about. It's very low noise. Uh, when I was going from the Soloist 3X, the old one GT, to the new one, and then to the new one with the SP02, it felt like uh, I'm listening to music through my amplifier to I'm listening to music without an amplifier. I know it sounds a little bit cliche. Remember the old cliche that the amplifier just disappeared? Well, that's exactly what I'm getting with the free XGT with the SP02 installed. It's like I'm listening to uh, real-time music that is happening right now, not to some recording that happened in the past. It sounds crazy, but it's like uh, listening to my DAC and to the tonality of my headphones. It's like something like that. The difference is quite big when coming from the old uh, Soloist Free XGT to the new one, retrofitted with SP02, not only with uh, desktop headphones, but also with ultra sensitive IMs. Again, the noise floor is lower, so you'll be listening to more music and to less noise, and the difference is actually quite big. Actually, in amplifier designs, the noise floor is basically the most important aspect because everything is tied to the noise. Uh, the sound is not only more transparent and clearer, but also more focused. The leading edges are better, the sound stage are bigger, the noise separation is better, so everything is tied to the noise floor. And if you already have that Supercharger 5A, then uh, this will do pretty much the same, just a little bit more. So if you already invested in these uh, high-end uh, headphone amplifiers, I do believe that paying additional 300 US dollars uh, is actually a must-have upgrade for your Soloist Free GT and Free Act GT.
If you are wondering how the soloists are working as preamplifiers in a stereo setup, I use them together with two bars on Timekeeper Free XGT mono blocks for a really nice uh, family reunion. I also used uh, these two on uh, that mothership rack together with a streamer and DAC. So I had a really big setup in a way to test my uh, loudspeakers. Those KEF reference free that you see behind me, those are not easy to drive. Those are difficult to drive. They have a stiff aluminum driver, so they need a lot of power to start, stop, and just control the drivers really nicely. I tried plenty of amplifiers in the past, but uh, I always arrived at you know dual mono amplifiers. Right now, I'm not using a dual mono amplifier, but I've used plenty of them because uh, they just provided more power and uh, clearly my calves sounded just better, more dynamic and more controlled, especially in the low end. Now, I've used uh, Benchmark HB2 power amplifiers for a very long time and compared to those, the Barson stack uh, just infused a little bit more energy down low. The bass was more powerful, but also more controlled at the same time. Uh, the mid-range was more textured, the voices, especially the male vocals, were more guttural and the treble was not as gritty, not as um, bothering in the, in the long run. So the benchmarks are great amplifiers, but you need a warmer source, you need a warmer preamplifier or just a warmer sounding loudspeaker, something that I don't have. So uh, clearly for me, benchmarks didn't work that well, but the Barson setup just worked nicer because they are more natural, more organic sounding compared to the benchmark creations. This combo didn't only bring the thunder with some uh, you know, uh, high dynamic range tracks, but I felt that the sound stage was also bigger compared to those benchmark creations. So don't ask me how, I cannot explain, but the sound stage was bigger with the, uh, you know, with the Barson setup and the difference was not so big, but you know, uh, it's no secret that the benchmarks are not impressive when it comes to scale. The benchmarks are not that impressive when it comes to depth, when it comes to soundstage, don't ask me why. Uh, when I was using two of them, they slightly improved, but still I wanted a slightly more holographic experience and that was coming from the Barson stack. Don't ask me why, but the Barsons were just uh, filling my room with more sounds. Uh, everything felt a little bit punchier, a little bit more alive, uh, a little bit farther away from me. So I like the sound of the Barsons with my setup uh, clearly a lot more. I really don't like to have super long and super boring reviews, so I'll stop here. But if you want to know more about them, especially in terms of power output, noise floor, transit response, soundstage imaging, bass, midrange, and treble, then please check out my written review that I left below. There is so much more information. Wrapping things up, you already have my detailed comparisons in between the old Soloist Free XGT and Flux Lab Acoustics Volot. Firm Ore and Hypsos Ilium AMP23R, but clearly all those comparisons are no longer valid because these are very different beats. Therefore, I'm inclined to do uh, another 8-in-1 comparison review between the world's best headphone amplifiers. I'm still waiting delivery for two headphone amplifiers and one is in the making, so when I'll have them all, I'll start comparing all those units. Hopefully that will happen before Christmas this year, so please stay in tune for that. The question if the new soloists are worth it or not is simply obsolete for me and let me explain why. I wasn't very kind to Barson Audio in the past, I had plenty of issues and quirks with the old Soloist 3X, with the 3X GT, the volume was not very precise and it was not linear, it was mostly logarithmic. I had buzzing noise coming from their display, the noise floor was not impressive, uh, they didn't have a slow start, slow turn off, so I was getting those pops and crackles, but right now all those issues are forever gone, so I'm no longer bothered by all those things while listening to music, uh, and considering that uh, inflation rate went up by 18% from Q4 2021 to Today, you are basically paying less for a better performance. So for me, that's a gold award for both units. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed my review. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this video. My name is Sando and I'll see you soon.